welcome to the Brynamore Mission Area and the Prostatian Church in Wales service of spiritual communion for Easter Day. I shall be leading this service from the Church of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia! He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you, and keep you in the love of Christ. Father of glory, holy and eternal, look upon us now in power and mercy. May your strength overcome our weakness, your radiance transform our blindness, and your spirit draw us to that love shown and offered to us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments, Hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin, and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Mark chapter 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. 
trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. A rolled stone is good news. What a wonderful day, remembering the day that Jesus rose from the dead. It's all the more glorious because we have considered the agony that he went through just three days before, physically, emotionally, psychologically, theologically, well in every way, Jesus suffered a cruel death. Now the women, women came early to the tomb to fulfil the burial customs and the rites that they were denied on the Friday. They were discussing the practicalities of how they would move such a huge stone that had been placed across the entrance to the cave-like grave. They thought that they would have a huge obstacle before they could access Jesus, but he had already removed all the obstacles. It had been a huge concern, but in reality, Jesus could more than handle it. I want to assure you that today, Jesus still handles all the reasons and obstacles that we may perceive that might stop us coming to him. Some might be thinking, well, I'm not good enough, or I'm too guilt-ridden. I couldn't be of any use to him, or maybe I'm too old to change, and many others besides. But if you think about the women who were coming to the tomb that morning, according to Mark, it was Mary Magdalene who seems to have been at one time demon-possessed and a woman of the night. Another Mary described as the mother of James, well that implies that she was an older person. And then Salome, about whom much has been argued but very little concluded. So she was likely a familiar member of this close group of female followers, maybe a bit of a tag of honour. Even together, they could easily have thought the task just too daunting and not bothered at all. For us today, don't be daunted. We can still have access to Jesus. Whatever obstacles we think there are, are no more. The stone has been rolled away. Maybe the women were concerned about his dead body being unclean. I'm sure they would have taken the first century equivalent of PPE, hand sanitizer, something to cover their faces from the unpleasant smells, all those sorts of precautions. And how surprised they were when they found a young man in white, symbolising cleanliness, purity and holiness. Most likely an angel, although that is not made clear in Mark. Don't be cautious about seeking Jesus. Whatever doubts or worries, whatever cost to yourself may be involved, the stone has been rolled away to reveal good news, that the free gift of God is new life, a clean start, a new beginning without fear. The women were sent away with a task to tell the disciples that Jesus had risen and would meet them in Galilee. They ran out trembling and bewildered by the whole experience. They weren't trapped themselves. The stone had been rolled away and they were free to share the good news with others. But they didn't, because they were afraid of what others might think. They acted as if the stone was still in place. Don't be afraid to let others know about Jesus. You are likely to be the person that they will be believe, whose testimony carries weight. If the stone hadn't been rolled away, there wouldn't be a resurrection. Jesus wouldn't have been seen by hundreds of people. There wouldn't be a worldwide religion in his name. 
and I certainly wouldn't be advocating it. So let Jesus roll away any blockages to your faith. Let him roll away any fear or hesitancy over coming to him. The rolled stone led to the rollout of good news. We can receive his gift of new life and others need to hear about it too. The stone is rolled, we are not trapped, so let's get out there. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. A rolled stone is good news. The Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, in glory, to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We acknowledge in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we lift before you on this glorious Easter morning all who find today difficult, who need to grasp your promise of new life and the hope of eternity with you. So for all who are struggling today, we ask your blessing and your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are on our prayer board today, Lord, each one is known to you, their development, their recovery, the difficulties that they are suffering. Please be close to them and bring them your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our government, both national and regional, Lord, please would you continue to guide them as they lead us through this pandemic. And may the continuing relaxation of restriction be helpful to us all and beneficial to the economy, to health, to the education. And Lord, please would you help us all to continue to be wise so that we don't risk a further wave of COVID-19. Lord, please would you guide us. Please would you give wisdom to those in authority. And Lord, we ask that you would be Lord of this nation once more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for your church, which will be somewhat different after lockdown. 
Please, Lord, would you inhabit your people? Please, Lord, would you unite your people? Please, Lord, would you grow your kingdom and bring glory to yourself through your people? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And on this day, which reminds us of the new life in Christ, of his resurrection and our hope of eternity. Lord, if there are other things on our mind, other people's situations, difficulties that we just can't get over at this point, we lift them to you and leave them at the foot of the cross. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. They were overjoyed on seeing the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. The peace of the Lord. In the Holy Communion, Christ promises to feed us with the spiritual grace of his body and blood. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a communion in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a communion in the body of Christ? Wrote St Paul in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 16. However, there are circumstances which in which access to the Eucharist is simply not possible. And at times like this, the Church teaches that God's grace is nevertheless accessible, that it is possible to make an act of spiritual communion. Jesus, Saviour of the world, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament, you have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may know within ourselves the fruit of your redeeming love, who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Listen to the words of comfort that St Paul says. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins. Take a moment to reflect upon the Eucharist and Christ's command to do this in remembrance of me. O oh, blessed Lord, in union with the faithful throughout the world, at every high table of your church where the Eucharist is being celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that they may be united to you. Since we cannot now receive the sacrament, we invite you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you 
and embrace you with heart and mind and soul. Let nothing ever separate you from us, so that we may live and die in your love. Amen. Living God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in believing. And the blessing of God Almighty Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia! He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for sharing in the service today. I hope you can join us again next time, which will be in a fortnight's time on the 18th of April. There will be live services in our churches that day, 9.30 a communion at uh, the Church of the Holy Spirit and at 10.45 a communion at Christ Church, but also a little something online as well. So until then, keep safe, keep praying, and keep close to Jesus. Oh,